Khufu, the ancient island of the Fayaks. One of the Mediterranean islands with the most tourism and also a place where the members of today's international jet set meet. The International Airport is located a few kilometres from the town and daily flights serve the island's thousands of visitors. Here the magic spell of nature meets with history in a harmonic union of rhythms and pictures. On the Spionada Square lies the Liston, with its elegant arches made by the French in the 19th century and reminds us about the Rue de Tivoli. Distinctive as a lay motif is the carriage, so-called a maxa, in a busy and happy town. Corfu celebrates the 21st of May, its union with Greece. The Masseray in front of the Liston is a beautiful view which refers to the island's history and to French influence. The dance, which is performed by the Corfurian Dance Company, has all the characteristics of Greek island dance, with an allegro mood and quick steps. It is called Ruga and is a traditional Corfurian dance. It is danced in the villages and folk costumes are traditionally worn by the inhabitants of Gasturi. From the high-sighted Canoni, the mascot of Corfu, Podikonisi, 
can be seen. Opposite, on a small island, lies the monastery of Flaherna. A memorial from Venetian architecture is the town hall, which was built in the period 1663 to 1680 and which was used as a club for nobility and later had its peak period when it became the residence for the first Greek melodramatic opera called San Giacomo. In this neoclassical building, the first governor of the Free Greece Yanis Kapodistrias was born. On this island, which is loaded with memorials and history, the old people have a lot to remember and their chat gives new life to the events of the past. Next to the Spionada, in the park of the upper square, the local people take their daily stroll and on summer evenings the orchestra of the township give concerts of classical music. The carriages are waiting for the visitors to take them for a romantic drive around the town. Here is the old harbour, which via the ferry boat connects the island with the rest of Greece. The beauty of the Venetian and neoclassical buildings which surround the city gives the visitor the feeling of being in another century. Off of Sirocco Square, which lies in the centre of the town, leads Alexandrius Avenue, which connects the city to Goetzus Bay. At the end of Alexandrius Avenue stands the Column of Douglas, choked with trees and plants, just like the statues of the men who through history gave their names to the island. Among them are some local Corfuian authors, whose statues are located in a small garden, which the Corfuians call Boschetto. Also here is the statue of the Englishman Guildford, On the corner of the upper square is the archway built by the Englishman Midland and next to it the statue of Yanis Kapodistrias.
400 years under Venetian rule left deep traces in the town planning and in the architecture. The narrow and picturesque streets with their Venetian arches and neoclassical noble houses give an Italian feel to the town. The high buildings which rule the place create a feeling of the great Middle Ages. The market of Corfu is full of life. The commercial spirit, the ability to event, and the fantasy of the inhabitants offer the visitor a large choice of popular art. The richness of shapes, the subtle combination of colors that we see in the textiles, and the glory of the silverware shows the effect of many cultures which have assimilated in a harmonious way with the creations of the inhabitants. Turin made by Constantinos Stamatiadis in 22 and 18 karat gold fitted in lapis is unusually decorated with rubies, sapphires and emeralds. For those that have more money, nice furs can be bought on Khufu. Opposite the Spianada Square lies the castle at a distance of 100 metres. It is built upon a little island, taking no notice of the years that pass by. Behind its walls, the first town of Khufu was born, and these walls protected the town from the French invasion in the 12th and 13th century. The first important fortifications that were built on the castle were done by the Byzantines and completed by the Venetians. Inherited from the English occupation is the Church of St George, the barracks and the clock.
High up, the two tops of the Castle Vecco and Castle Niveau look upon the town. On the other side of the Spionada Square lies the Royal Palace, one of the most beautiful Greek buildings. It was drawn by the English amateur architect, Colonel Withmore, who managed to combine harmonically the classic Greek elements with two semicircled wings. The interior of the building is decorated by unknown artists, probably under the supervision of an architect. Impressing is the use of anthenium, an element which was used by the ancient Greeks. The restoration of the building, carried out by the architect Kola, was a toilsome job. In the throne room was the seat of the English High Commissioner and later the building was used as a residence by the Greek royalty. The halls of the Royal Palace Houses, today the Museum of Chinese and Japanese Art, which was founded by gifts from Mrs. Gregory Manos, Hagzi Vasiliu, Siniosuglu, and Hiotakis.
Masks from the No Theatre. Weapons and Armour from the Samurai. An ancient lion made by the Corinthian artist in the 7th to 9th century. Metal arms from a grave, similar to a box found at the Dredromas of Thespotis. A red cinnary urn, Calphis. The visitor to the archaeological museum should dwell by the gigantic prediment of the Temple of Artemis, a creation of a Corinthian artist. It represents the goddess Giorgio in four views with wings and enveloped in snakes, a part of an archaic rooftop. It presents a symposium of Dionysus, Dionysus and a young boy lying down and looking to the right. This work was filmed for the first time. With special interest for the visitor to Khufu is the Ahilion, the palace of the Romantic Empress of Switzerland, Sissi. The Italian architects, who under the supervision of the Austrian Bukowitz, tried to combine different kinds of styles, which resulted in the Pompeian peristyle. The Romantic Empress, who systematically learnt ancient Greek, wanted to restore King Alcinous' gardens, and she decorated her gardens with many statues. The most outstanding of these is the dead Arhilias, made by the German man Herter. In 1905, the Ahilion was bought by the Kaiser. He added a bronze statue of the fighter Ahilias to the garden because he could not bear seeing the hero die. The wall paintings in the entrance of the Four Seasons are made in a pure Roman Renaissance style.
It seems as if the romantic and sentimental empress is looking at the tower of Joseph the Francis, who became her unlucky husband. The small chapel, where one can retire to pray, is decorated with its own Christ. The jewellery of the Empress Sissy. The following owner of the Ahelian, Kaiser Wilhelm, had such a passion with riding that he ordered to have a saddle made in front of his office. It still seems that the picture of Ahilias, who drew the dead body of Heifer outside the walls of Troy, is his addition because it doesn't fit in with the taste of a woman who preferred to have a statue of the dying hero in her gardens. This beautiful building, which was built by the Corfuian architect Huroni, houses the Scholars Club of Corfu. It was founded in 1863 by Corfuian students at French universities, and they brought the spirit of Europe's liberalism to the island. Here the desk of Capodistrias can be found, the first governor of the Ionian states. A bust and pictures from the life of Lorenzo Mavilli, among the thousands of books. The Liberadora, the Book of Honour. Here, all the families who received titles of honour are listed. Inherited to the island from the Byzantiums is the church of St. Yasonas and St. Sosipatros, made in the 12th century. The church of St. Spiridonas lies in the centre of the town and gathers the inhabitants' Christian devotion. The bell tower of the church has a striking similarity with the bell tower of St. George of Venice, which was built at the same time in 1589. At the west part of the island, in Paleocastritza, lies the Byzantine Monastery of the Holy Virgin, which was built during the 12th century. Its arches and bell tower impress the visitors. The view from the monastery is magnificent. In the distance, the rocks, 
which according to tradition form the marbled ship of Algerian pirates. The local inhabitants call it the stone ship. The beaches in this area are something very special. The combination of blue and green beneath the dazzling light in harmony with the shades of landscape create magnificent views. From Paleocostritza, we pass Sidari. Here the boat links the island with other smaller islands. From Sidari, we pass Rhoda, with its beautiful beaches and hospitable inhabitants. Thirty-seven kilometres from Corfu town lies the beautiful fishing village Cassiope. Built in a privileged position, it offers plenty of fresh fish to the visitor. In Dacia, there are organised clubs for sea sport, and the visitor has, besides the sea and sun, the possibility to taste in a peaceful atmosphere all the delights of the summer. picturesque fishing village, Benitsis. The island's mascot is the magnificent Podiconisi, with its small church of Satyrus. It can again be seen as if all the time it wants to follow with a picture of Corfu. The legend says that Podiconisi is the wrecked ship of Odysseus, who was a guest of the Phaeax, and of Nausicaa before he returned to Ithaca. The roulette is spinning. In 
inside of the Ahelion is the casino. The visitor needs strong nerves to face the mood of luck. The lovers who want to enjoy romantic guitar music will discover that Kulfu will present them with a very special evening. The discotheques open summer and winter and are always merry and cool. The right music secures that the visitor always has a good time. a traditional dance that expresses the gaiety of Greek life.
Zembeki Ko, a sad dance with slow steps that is danced by one man while the others escort him with poetical phrases. Now the atmosphere has arrived and the audience joins in the dance, trying to learn the sitaku. The night ends with a traditional serenade sung beneath the girl's window who is loved by the young man. She might throw flowers to him, but her father, even though he may have his objections, will listen and smile. Έφυγες και μου πες δεν πειράζει Ούτε και με ρώτησες γιατί Ήσυχη κοιμάσαι δεν σε νοιάζει Ίσως να έχω ξεχαστεί Όμως τις νυχτίες που τριγυρίζω Το παλιό μας τράτουδο σκοπό Πάντοτε θα ρω πως αντικρίζω και να βράδυ θα στο υπό. Βάρτω μια νύχτα με φεγγάρι να σε ξυπνήσω και την παλιά μας την αγάπη να σου Μια κιθάρα με στη νύχτα σιγανά, το παρεθύρι να σε δω να μη ξανά. Άρθω μια νύχτα με φεγγάρι, να σου είπω πως ακόμα σ' αγαπώ. The visitor who leaves Corfu from the harbour faces the walls of the castle 
which slowly disappear together with the impressions of the island. The morning is beautiful, but a touch of grief can be felt when the trip to this island, which could be called the Princess of the Ionian Islands, ends.